What's up guys, Max and Maxworks here, and today we are doing the first kind of build video on my 1993 Crown Line 225 CCR uh, boat. And so if you guys saw the last video, I basically just took it out in the water, gave it a shakedown run, and it turns out there isn't really all that much wrong with it. So we're not going to have some sort of crazy build series like I have with uh, a lot of my other projects, but there are a few things that I didn't like and I felt we needed to fix. Today's game plan is I'm going to show you how to set up uh, and use a two battery system uh, with a single motor. So basically you have what I'm gonna call a starter battery, which is primary jobs to make sure the engine will start, uh, and a house battery, whose primary function is to run our various electronics uh, when the engine is not running. And so this is true for overland vehicles, this is true for um, uh, like campers, like uh, RVs, this is true for you know, custom whatever, anything that's got an engine and is also a living space and or has electronic needs. And the heart of that system is obviously the two batteries. This boat already has two batteries, however, they are not secure. I'll link to this below. These are like nine bucks. They're uh, group 31 or group 24 um, trays. They come with a strap, they bolt down. I use the same exact thing in the adventure trailer and bounce that thing down the beach and they work great and like I said, they're super cheap like nine bucks a piece um, but the heart of it is this this is the blue sea automatic charging relay and this is important so the blue sea unit is about 80 bucks you can find what are called isolation relays um, solid state ones will run you 60 dollars with solid state uh, or you can find like really cheap old school ones that have an actual like big ass solenoid in them for like 40 bucks my two cents is the Blue Sea Products one is, in my opinion, the best on the market. It uh, works. It's you know water rated. It's it's fantastic. The company makes fantastic products. I have no relationship with them. I've not sponsored. I paid full price for it. It's what I choose to use. I highly recommend it. Even over the cheaper isolator relays, it's worth the twenty bucks uh, for me for peace of mind. So what does an automatic charging relay do? Basically you have a motor. The motor has an alternator on it that puts out uh, electrical energy. And when it does that, you want it to be able to charge both batteries. However, when your motor is off and you're listening to music or um, you know the battery is running whatever electronics you have, you want to drain the house battery because that's you know, you're know you using that energy, but you don't want to drain the starter battery because if you drain the starter battery, you can't start your motor. Um, and what this does is it isolates that starter battery so whenever you're using energy and the alternator isn't running, um, it will only pull from the house battery and it won't allow you to drain your starter battery. So yeah, eventually like your music's gonna stop, but you'll always be able to restart the motor. When the motor is started, it actually sends power to both batteries so that both batteries can charge and it manages that relationship between the two batteries. Um, it's pretty easy to install, it just requires a few extra cables. Um, we're probably going to make a make our own cables. I got plenty of wire and connectors and stuff. Um, so this is going to be the heart of it. So we're, once we get our batteries mounted, we're going to install this um, and uh, use the. It's got like a three-way switch on it already for selecting batteries. You also need one of those, but it's already installed on the boat. So uh, we're just going to use it. The other few things I have is um, I got some some of these standard like single throw uh, single action switches. Uh, I'll show you guys what these are for. I don't fully trust the oil pressure gauge on the dash, so we're going to install, install a second one in the engine compartment just so I can have a, uh, a trusted way of knowing. Uh, I needed one of these for the subwoofer, I'll show you guys, not a big deal. And then this was broken on the boat, I want to be able to cover, I have a nice Bluetooth head unit in there. This keeps water from accidentally splashing on the head unit because the head unit is just a standard automotive head unit, it's not waterproof or anything. Um, so we're going to install all of this good stuff. Uh, in the boat right now. So here's kind of the mess we're looking at. So you can see there's our two batteries. Um, that one's the house battery, this one's the starter battery, uh, I think. We'll figure it out here in a second. But you can see they have some power cables. Um, we're gonna use some more. We also need to secure this subwoofer and, and fix some of this wiring. But as you can see, it's kind of a little bit of a mess. And there's a bunch of stuff running to that battery over there, which I don't really like, and I don't like that the contacts aren't insulated. But the first thing we do is we're gonna pull all of this out of here so that we can install our battery trays uh, back there in the far back so that the battery weight is all the way in the back. 
So here we go, we got our batteries secured. We've got our uh, ACR unit in place. Uh, basically, A is gonna be your starter battery, B is your house battery, which we have starter and house. Um, and then you have to run a ground. I just ran it to the starter battery. Um, next thing we got to do is make up some brackets to get our uh, subwoofer at least sort of mounted in place. Then clean up the subwoofer wiring. Now, basically what they've done here is they've added this green wire. Whenever this wire is grounded, the radio is on. Um, it also needs uh, power, but the radio is on. So basically you have... Uh, a switch and what they were doing is they're just taking this on and putting it back off we're gonna do is we're gonna make an actual switch uh, that controls the radio um, and put that on here as well so that it's not quite so ghetto so we got the subwoofer mounted all I really did was basically get some aluminum scrap um, bolt it down to the floor and then run these old straps through it this thing is it moves a little bit but it's, uh, it's pretty secure. Um, and when the seat is down, there's nowhere really for it to move back in front. Um, so that should be fine. We got it plugged in. Last thing to do with this wiring is we're gonna put a switch uh, for our uh, switch for our um, radio. And uh, we're probably gonna just put it right here so it's easy to reach, um, easy to bolt to, um, and doesn't really get in the way. So added a little switch panel here. This will basically connect the radio to ground. This switch is blank. Um, I just added a second one in case, you know, something comes up that I need to. Other than that, we got the battery strapped in, we got all the cables run. Uh, we got the cover on our ACR. Um, so now we can, I put these uh, floaty things in here just to help keep the subwoofer stabilized. Other than that, I think we're done over here with the wiring. Next thing I did was just added this waterproof cover um, to it, to the radio, just to keep everything kind of safe. And uh, that pretty much concludes our wiring. I ordered two waterproof voltmeters, but they're not here yet, um, that I'm probably going to install just so I can turn them on and monitor the battery. That's what that other switch that I put in is for. Um, but for now, this is kind of all we can do on the electrical side. All in all, not too bad, mostly just a cleanup job. So here's our little custom bent piece of sheet metal with our two voltmeters in it. Um, turn that on. This shows us that battery. This shows us that battery. This is basically just a switch to ground. Turns these voltmeters on. Let's them read. Um, just something I can use to keep keep track of voltage, uh, especially once we get it running with this ACR. I can make sure that one battery is discharging, but the other one isn't. Uh, it's very important. Um, other than that, that pretty much concludes all of the work that needs to be done back here on the electronics. I might clean up the wires a little bit more, but honestly, they're, they're, they're hidden back here. Nobody really goes back in this end other than to turn the radio on and off. Uh, we got our carb sorted out. I just had to skip the oil gauge because the oil sending unit in this thing is kind of, it works. And it's kind of rusty in there and I feel like if I go in there and try to break it out it's just gonna stop working and then I'm gonna end up needing to buy more parts and stuff so we're gonna put that one on the back burner uh, I might circle back to it later I might not it just depends um, unfortunately this marine block doesn't seem to have any of the other ports that are often common on cars a lot of times you can find other places to tap in this one doesn't seem to have that and so that's kind of limited my options a little bit so we're going to clean up. We're pretty much done back here. Uh, the next thing we got to tackle is fixing this uh, chair piece. So the first thing we do is we clean out all the rod and wood carcass and all the staples out of here. I'm still cleaning out some staples. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to use this. This is just a little two by two piece of like, it's not quarter, it's probably like three eighths or something sixteenths. I don't know, whatever. Um, less than half an inch. We're gonna basically trace this guy onto here, cut it out, slip it back in here, um, buffer, and we're gonna to have to mark these bolts out. So the way these bolts work is basically, before you mount this in there, you have to put these bolts through, and then they're secured using these kind of like lock-on uh, nut things. And I seem to have lost one, so I need to find it. 
Um, but they're basically secured to the wood, and then you put the wood in there and you staple everything around. Then once it's stapled around, um, you install it and then you just basically tighten these washers and nuts back on here. Um, so I need to find that other guy, but uh, it's on the floor around here somewhere. So here's basically the piece of wood with the bolts through it. This one was too rusty to go back on. Hopefully we can get enough clamping force. I under drilled the holes and basically tapped the wood. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit this in here, get our air stapler set up and basically just sink a whole bunch of staples around the perimeter, make sure it's secure and then get it reinstalled. So here's what it looks like installed. Here's the factory one. You can see this needs to get pulled in some. Unfortunately, so you can tell my forearm is too big to get all the way up there to actually get the, the nut on. So I'm gonna have to wait until I'm on a boat with somebody with small forearms. They can really get up in there. It's nothing difficult, it's just, I can't fit. So right now the engine is idling and you can see both batteries are charging. And if we look down here, you can see this LED is on. That shows that we're charging both batteries even though we only have one battery selected. So if we were to turn the engine off, and now we're no longer charging, um, we have a load on here, which is this head unit is flashing. So we need to set this to, let's see, Bluetooth audio. I'm not sure if that's even enough load. Um, but right now the radio is running off of uh, off of the house battery, uh, which is actually higher than the engine battery. So this may not prove my point, but the, if you look down here, this light is now off, um, which means that it's isolated. So basically if we run down the house battery at this point, um, it's never gonna run down the starter battery, which is the one on the right. Um, so, our electrical system works. Fuck yeah. Next thing I had to do is I took the bimini out, gave it a good cleaning. This is the stuff I've been using, 303 multi-purpose cleaner. Really good stuff, not sponsored, pay for that with my own money. Um, Amazon link down below. But uh, that stuff's really good. I clean the whole boat with it, clean the bimini top with it. It really takes off a lot more stains than I thought it would. Um, and it got everything looking pretty, pretty good. Um, I'm gonna let this bimini air out overnight because it's kind of stinky um, but hopefully it should clean up pretty good as always thanks for watching my name is max this is max works if you like the video hit the like button if you like the channel subscribe there'll be probably a few more videos in the boat but make sure you check out our playlist for the adventure trailer the k5 blazer and that motorcycle peace